Bo- 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 Boss Cowboy Sports. Where w- w- your voice matters. Yeah, I'm over too bossy. Uh, we don't tread softly. Uh, but not flossy. Uh, the streets ain't taught me. Uh, but we're too bossy. Uh, we don't tread softly. Uh, but not flossy. Uh, the streets ain't taught me. Uh, I'm just trying to get my neck paid. We came from Section A. And I knew I was at since the second grade. Man, I swear my time is coming because I'm never late. Came from broken homes and broken dreams to get it made. Boss Cowboys. Your voice matters. And it does. And it does. What a week. What a week. Yup. So, what is one thing? <laughs> mm. About Michael Parsons. Let's define it. And then we go talk about Chuma back. What does that mean? Yeah, because it means some things. Your boy boss been out fighting the cold, but work has to be done. And I'm here to do it. So we gonna talk about it. It's not gonna be as nasty as what y'all think. It's gonna be measured as usual. So we gonna talk about all the gossip, but we wanna talk about football. Sit back, relax, I got you, man. We gonna measure this Kool-Aid. Let's go. Boss Cowboy Sports. Where your voice matters. Right. It does. Let's go. I just drop a nine, month to month, still from year to year New watch, no diamonds, new watch, good timing, yeah New watch, no diamonds, new watch, good timing, yeah I'm sporty and rich, I'm sporty and rich, I'm sporty and rich Do it again, again, again I'm sporty and rich, I'm sporty and rich, I'm sporty and rich do it again, again, again Get some checks, I invest, and I spend a check Spend a check, get it back, then I take a rest Only race is the human, I take care of my skin I was doing this as a rookie, now I'm up to vet Set the, set the trend, set the pace of play I don't trip, but if I fall, bet I make a way I take trips in the fall, watch the least change I like to treat every day like, like it's, it's my, my B-Day, B-day. New watch, no diamonds, new watch, good timing, yeah New watch, no diamonds, new watch, good timing, yeah I'm sporty and rich, I'm sporty and rich, I'm sporty and rich Do it again, again, again I'm sporty and rich, I'm sporty and rich, I'm sporty and rich Do it again, again, again Welcome to Boss Cab on Sports with your voice matter do it again, again, again. All executives, y'all come in and have a seat. Do it again, again, again. Yeah, man. So, we go get down to the nitty gritty. Because, obviously, you know, Cowboy World is shaking up right now on what's been going on and the, the talk of Micah Parsons and Warren Thin. So, the good news about me being under the weather is I sleep on things and I take my time. I'm not going to be in a hurry. 
Uh, and when you take your time and you really think through this stuff, it end up being a lot of times, especially with Cowboy Nation, not what it seems. Uh, so I'm gonna measure the Kool-Aid on this man and kind of get into it. Uh, Cause it's made obviously some major headlines, obviously. So I think one of the uh, articles that got it really right to me, and I'm gonna highlight this, this came from A to Z Sports. I think they did a real good job, man, A to Z Sports. Um, and one of the questions in the article, you know, as let me just kind of talk about this. And Black, I'm glad you in the building, my brother. Always good to see you and hear from you, my friend. So, it, it got real heavy when, obviously, they was having a, a discussion on 105.3 The Fan with Sean and RJ and Bobby Bell, that's the sidekick. He said, I've heard from way too many people this offseason, way too many people. I'm talking about at least four different people that Michael has worn thin there, Sharif said on that. Now, I don't know how much this is true and how much it actually hurts. I don't know whether this is the behavior of a typical stu superstar. So let's focus on this word, behavior. All right, because we go, we go come back to that. Behavior, okay? I don't know how damaging it is. But all I know is this. I've heard from way, way, way too many people. If Michael Parsons was out there, there'd be a decent amount of people inside the Ford Center at the star in Frisco smiling or breathing a sigh of relief. So obviously that took off. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that took off. And then, you know, especially when you see Diggs, and this is why I shout out to A to Z Sports, man. They, they did a good job of putting it all together. Just kind of like all the speculation that began to come out of that. So Trey Diggs was like, who said it? That's some weird S-H-I-T. And so Diggs jumps out there and say, ah, yes. I know how this go. Shake my effing head. This is what happened whenever it's time to get paid. Oh, so the speculation is started to go out there big time. Yeah. So, I love this question by A to Z Sports. Very good question. Simply ask yourself, what could Parsons have done in order for such thoughts to arise around people in the organization despite the Hall of Fame caliber start that Parsons had to his career? Very good question. So what's happening in my opinion is people starting to connect dots and we gotta be very careful that we don't connect dots that don't directly connect. Being all the way honest with y'all. Because see, in a time like this, it's easy to play to the anger of the Dallas Cowboy fans and try to make the fan the enemy right now. But as I thought about this, I think this is, is some truth to some of this. I'm going I'm to get into it, right? Because he was very careful on what he said, and I'm going to play what he said. I'm going to play Sean and what he said. He was talking about behavior. Now, the problem is he didn't define it. That's why I put on a thumbnail what is worn thin. <clears throat> So let me play it and then we go talk about what is worn thin. All right, so let me, here we go. Y'all give me one second to, to play this. Yeah, here we go. And I put the full link in the description. What you doing this topic about CeeDee Lamb? Moving on. 
Uh, I mean, we can absolutely do it. You're going to have to pay Micah Parsons more money. I think Micah Parsons is going to cost you more. If you're looking at cost efficiency and look, if we're being honest, who do I think is a better locker room presence for them? It's CeeDee Lamb, and I don't think it's close. Uh, I hey, think here's the sentence I'll say. Web team, take take off, take off the <laughs> take off the rest of the segment. Don't listen. Don't. So I want y'all to peep game. He said, web team, take off. In other words, I know what I'm getting ready to say is getting ready to raise some eyebrows and rub people wrong. Listen. Yeah. Come on. Just, I, just pretend like you're on G-Bag for a little bit. I, uh, <laughs> I have heard from way too many people this offseason, way too many. I'm talking about at least... At least four different people that Micah has worn thin there. Hmm. Now I don't know how much hmm. is 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 true and how much it actually hurts. I don't know whether this is the behavior of a typical superstar. I don't know how damaging it is, but all I do know is this. I wish you would have defined behavior. I wish you would have find defined behavior because I heard him define it before. I'm gonna talk about it. I've heard from way, 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 way too, from way too many people. If Micah Parsons was out of there, there'd be a decent amount of people inside the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco smiling or breathing a sigh of relief. Hmm. That is my hot take statement that to me is really close to factual about just dealing with him. So that last part is what you got to focus on. Focus on the last part. If Parsons was out of there, there'd be a decent amount of people inside the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco smiling or breathing a sigh of relief. Hmm. That is my hot take statement that to me is really close to factual about just dealing with him. And just dealing with him. Ooh, so y'all better pay attention. And just dealing with him mm. so what people are trying to say now and what I believe people are connecting wrong people saying oh the fan is a flagship station of the Dallas Cowboys it's contract time so because this is contract time, they are doing a hit job on Michael Parsons on behalf of Jerry. And I'm gonna tell y'all, I don't think that's the case at all. I think this is one of those situations to where he says something that you can put into a bumper sticker and run with it. So guess what's happening? People running with it. The What he said that you can put into that bumper sticker is worn thin. So when you get worn thin, it don't matter the context of what he was saying. You know what people go do? They go focus on Ah, people on the inside trying to say they're one thing. But what is he talking about? What behavior? I think I know what he's talking about. You know what behavior I think he's talking about? That part of Michael Parsons that tends to say one thing but it's not what's actually going on. So like for instance, I would be a outright major hypocrite if I just slammed the fan when I done said something similar. So look, y'all remember this? Michael Parsons came out and he said, I challenge anyone to go watch the Green Bay film. So guess what we did? We went and watched it. 
and he challenged everybody like uh yeah i ain't i gave great effort it was nothing wrong i gave it all i left it out on the field and we looked at every play we looked at every play and this is what we came out with it was like yeah in the first half you what your effort was good we could not we could not look at you and judge your effort as bad we could not but in the third and fourth quarter your effort was not good it wasn't but when he came out to the public he spoke about it like y'all tripping Ain't nothing wrong with my film. And we're like, no. Yes, it was. Your effort was not consistent. It wasn't. So, honestly, I think that's what he talking about. Because I heard him talk about that before. And specifically, I think that's what's going around in the building. See, some of, like, we got to be very honest. We got to be very honest, right? If we want the best for this team, we can't pick sides. We got to really let the truth be the side, not what we favor or am I on Micah's side or am I on the fan side or I'm on the, on the front office side. No, I'm on the truth side. And I told y'all, and I want y'all to hear me out. Do y'all remember when Micah came out, right? And he was doing his um, tour, right? On Radio Row in the Super Bowl. And he came out and he was speaking about Tank. And he was talking about, man, you know, that's what I'm trying to change. <laughs> Cause I know when you get into the playoffs, you gotta be ready to go. And it's like, now Tank said the wrong thing, but Tank played the right way. You was not consistent. Tank effort being consistent. So I'm gonna be honest with y'all this is nothing yeah and remember michael parsons brought up bland by name so and see y'all gotta be honest we all gotta be honest man if you bringing up your teammates name on mistakes they made that's not gonna bother you that's not gonna bother you yeah that's gonna bother you and you gotta be honest with yourself so what's happening i'm being all the way honest people are running with this and they going way too far they thinking because he said worn tired or, or what was the word he used let me see worn thin they are connecting dots that's not really connecting i'm just being honest the dots yes see big benny you said it you said it you said it dry snitching that's why i love the people that come in this channel because see y'all thinkers <laughs> yes that was dry snitching bro don't keep my name out your mouth for real if you tank, how do you not say, bro, keep my name out your mouth? I get what you was trying to do, but you didn't have to put my name in that. If you bland, how do you, how do you not say to yourself, I get it, bro. You trying to be a leader, bro, but don't bring me up, bro. I'm trying to get paid. Yes. Yes. So a lot of I'm, I'm telling y'all what's happening people running with this because it's a it's a bumper sticker it's a bumper sticker and on top of what's going on i'm being honest what i really believe is going on 
Some of y'all ain't gonna wanna hear this, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. We still angry. We are very angry at front office behind Green Bay. We are angry. The temperature with the Dallas Cowboy fans say, listen, man, we up in arms. We are upset. And see, I'm going to tell y'all something, man. It's too many people that make long-term decisions when they're upset. It's too many people that draw the wrong conclusions because they're upset. Yeah. So this is a very good question. I like this question. He said, my question though, boss, is why now? Meaning, is that a reason to say that we are wearing thin off Micah? See, that's why you had to listen close to what he said. It's the behavior. Yeah, and if you listen close, I can see the word, yeah, some of that behavior does wear thin. I said it myself. I said it myself. So am I hating on Micah? Am I trying to hurt his money? No. But do I want the best? Do I want better leadership out of him? Yeah. Do I want you bringing up tank name on effort when you at the effort issue? Y yeah, I want you to chill on that. Yeah. And maybe it could be tank. Could it be Tank? Yeah. Could it be Tank that would be one of those guys that's like, yeah, I'm glad he gone, bro. Could it be Bland? What's up, Keystone? Keystone, I'm going to need you on day three, bro. I'm going to need you bad. I'm trying to get through this research. I don't know if I'm going to get through all the research, bro. I'm going to lean on you on day three. This, I don't know if this is going to be my best year of draft analysis, bro. So listen, y'all, I'm going to tell y'all right now, we're going to be leaning on Keystone Knowledge on day three and day two. So y'all tune in to the draft show. <laughs> we're going to need you, bro. We're going to need you for them sleepers. So get all your files ready. We're going to need the sleeper files. See, but some people, listen, y'all. Like, I know what y'all want to hear, and I know what would, would do numbers. What would do numbers right now if I, if I just went at the fan, if I just, if I just start smoking them. That would do numbers right now. That would do numbers. See, nah, I ain't, like, like I say, man, sometimes you got to tell the truth even when it's what people don't want to hear. Yeah. So let me give y'all a perfect example. Yeah, Star in the building. What's up, Star? Always good to see other content creators in the building. Star, Stargazer, she doing her thing, man. She, she speaks some mind. So, so yeah, I know you ready, Keystone. You stay ready. I'm, and, I'm, and I'm being very honest. And see, yeah, and see, this is why I love y'all, man, and I authentically love y'all because of stuff like this he said i got you boss it makes sense i want the truth don't tickle my ears you want answers you can't handle the truth yeah i'm not gonna do y'all like that man i'm not gonna do y'all like that and i also want to be fair because i know people take my content wrong it's a lot of people that said certain things that i said was for clickbait like when I was going at Kelly Moore, I was doing that to win. And I didn't appreciate when I was accused of being doing content for clickbait. So if I'm over there and I'm knowing, and he said out the gate, well, team, well, team, go ahead and check out. Meaning I'm finna say something that's gonna go crazy, but my sources are saying this. He knew it. <laughs> uh, hold on real quick. Hold on. Let me see. <laughs> hold on. He said, you don't get the same energy when it comes to that. Who? Who? First, I want to know who you're talking to. 
uh, second what energy I just want to be clear on what you're saying so you know so I'm not gonna take advantage of y'all anger I'm not gonna take advantage of the fact that you mad right uh, and then start feeding into that anger cuz see it's a profit in it oh yeah you can make some money it's a whole lot of people that really cater to the anger and see let me tell you who I'm gonna tell you who's smiling this whole time. Who actually laughing at this? Y'all wanna know who laughing at this right now? Steven. Jerry. They loving it. Cause it's publicity. Man, if y'all think we not gonna pay Michael Parsons, you are smoking some of the best crack ever. <laughs> Woo, you got some of the best Colombian crack of all time. If you really think this is to try to get us to get a better deal on Michael Parsons, you are smoking the best crack of, man, mm, give me some of that. My boy Cool Cat in the building. Oh, no, 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 no. Listen, y'all. Listen. This is a sin of sins. This is all kind of sin. My boy Cool Cat is a content creator for the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> and he talking about the lack of likes. <coughs> mm. Man, I told y'all I was sick, man. I'm trying to fight it. I'm fighting it for y'all, man. <sighs> Let's take a light break, man, because I'm giving y'all the truth today. I don't feel like lying. I don't feel like doing all that old lying and all of that old, you know, Twitter boxing. I'm not doing it. But let's get the likes up, man, because y'all came to hear the truth. Y'all ain't come from WWE. Y'all came for the truth. And I'm giving it to you. So, let's give you some more truth real quick. <clears throat> so, I'm going to go back in time. Okay. I'm going to go back in time. And I want y'all to listen. And let's talk about this. All right. I'm going to go back to G-Bag Nation. May 18th, 2022. And I want y'all to listen. How much di how much different is the offense going to be in 2022? Do you have any idea yet? So I know one of the things... Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Let me go to... No, no, no. I need this part right here. Here we go. Identity completely, but establish a little bit more toughness on offense and, and a little bit more bully ball. Listen. Hey, Bobby, is this kind of one of those make or break years for cd lamb you think when you start to talk about I, I contracts mean, I do. and stuff i i do yeah because i mean when you're talking about the fifth year option look i think that i i i believe their thought process there inside the building right now when it comes to cd lamb when they're looking at him and evaluating him they believe he's going to be able to take the next step and that he'll be able to step in and, and be the true number one but i think if you were to ask people like an honest moment away from you know the cameras and off the record and just said is cd lamb ceiling now or his potential is it as high as you believed it was the day you drafted him i think unanimously they would tell you no huh now or his potential is it as high as you believed it was the day you drafted him i think unanimously they would tell you no that they what they, they just don't quite think he's the guy that they picked i think they still think very highly of him and think that he can be a number one in this league but i, I think they are have been a little disappointed with what they've seen and and you know that he doesn't have that alpha energy it feels like to just go out there and take over a game we've just seen it what but he doesn't have that 
alpha energy it feels like to just go out there and take over a game. We've just seen it very infrequently at this point. And even though I know that was a complaint a lot of people had about Amari Cooper was that he would disappear, come and go, things like that. Um, there were several moments where he just took over games, and I don't think we've seen that from CD yet, and I think that's what they're waiting on. So it's going to be a big year to see that type of production out of him and that type of ability out of him. And if they don't get it, then, you know, I mean, I I don't know that the fifth-year option is necessarily going to be in question, but I I think his long-term security here might, and they might say, well, look, let's just, you know, repopulate with the draft, go ahead, exercise that fifth-year option, keep him around, but, like, this isn't the guy that we thought he was. So, yeah, I think it's definitely a big year for him and a big year for everybody on offense. Mm. Tyrone Church said he remembered that. Yeah, I remember that, too. What happened? Wow, because are they talking like that now? (laughs) What happened? So, wait, wait, wait. So, May 18, 2022, we wasn't even sure if you was an alpha. They basically was, I did a whole show on it. I did a whole show on that. Wait, 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 wait. Does the Dallas Cowboys have doubts on CD Lamb? Yeah. But what happened to the North Tyrone Church? Do, do we hear that it anymore? Do we hear? Is he an alpha? What happened? Uh, are there any questions on? Is he go get the back? Huh? Huh? Matter of fact, let's go listen to that same Bobby Bell. Huh? Let me let me go back and see what Bobby Bell said now, because this is a whole new Bobby Bell. Listen to this one. It's the Khalil Mack compensation. I'm glad you brought that up. The best comp you can find in recent. Hold on. Here we go. I think Michael Parsons is going to call. Austin Moore, if you're looking at cost efficiency and hold on, here we go. Hold on, let me get it right. Let me get it right. Let me get it right. I got to get it right. I got to get it right. Here we go. It's in history for what it would be like to move on from Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons is 25. Why aren't you doing this topic about CD Lamb? So he said, why are you not doing this about CD Lamb? Now, this was the same Bobby Bell that was talking about the beta energy that they was getting out of CD Lamb. This now, now listen to him. Moving on. Uh, I mean, we can absolutely do it. You're going to have to pay Micah Parsons more money. I think Micah Parsons is going to cost you more. If you're looking at cost efficiency and look, if we're being honest, who do I think is a better locker room presence for them? It's CeeDee Lamb, and I don't think it's close. Uh, Wait, I, I thought he was a beta. Sentence, I'll say, web team, take take off, take off, the, <laughs> take off the rest of the segment. Don't listen. Mm. So what changed? What changed? In 2022, the whispers was, we might not even, we might give you fifth year options. We might give you your fifth year option, but we not even certain if you are real number one. And don't act like that debate wasn't even happening amongst us. Cause it was. Come on now, let's go back to 2022. You telling me it wasn't no war between us? Was CeeDee Lamb go be a number one? Especially after the absence of Amari Cooper? Oh yeah, it was some fights within even this chat. Yeah, yeah, it was some fights. It was some doubts. It was some doubts. What changed? What changed? You know what changed? CD Lamb changed. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me today. You want answers? Yeah, that's who changed. Guess who was the person who removed all the doubt? Who did it? You can't handle the truth. You want answers? He changed. Is there any question today? Is he an alpha? Is there any questions today? Is he that dude? Is there any questions today? (laughs) My boy Rome in the house, man. 
What's up, Roman? Rome. He said, I never had it. I know you didn't, for real. It's, it's some people that did not doubt, and I know Rome was one. I'm going to tell you who else never doubted, CD Lamb. Law Nation never doubted one day. One day. He, he stayed 10 toes. Him and Rome stayed 10 toes down. But it was some fights. It was some fights. But who had to shut them up? Who had to quiet? Uh, is there any fights right now about C.D. Lamb? Yes or no? Is there any questions about C.D. Lamb? Yes or no? I want answers. You want answers? So what's my point? When you hearing noise like we was hearing in 2022 about C.D. Lamb, it tells me you got to shut them up. Y'all don't want to talk to me today. Y'all don't want to be honest with me today. Somebody got to shut up the noise. Because I don't hear people questioning your play, Michael Parsons. I don't hear people questioning... I don't hear people questioning your freakishness. I don't hear, I don't, I don't hear, uh, uh, hold on. We got 89 likes. Oh my God, man. what I do to y'all? Hey man, come on now. <laughs> the truth hurt like that. Oh, so y'all wanted me to just go shoot bullets at the fan. That's what y'all wanted. Okay, so y'all wanted me to go say, hey, they, they, you know, we wanted to, y'all wanted me to connect dots that don't connect. That's what y'all wanted. Come on now, like, listen, man, when you independent, you got to reward people that's, because listen, man, I could go angry mob, but that ain't right, bro. I'm not finna do that, bro. Yeah, my boy Skywalker in the building, man. He say the local media love to be contrarians when it suits them. Because they can be brutally honest with the dudes who run the organization. Get your damn back together. Salute, boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Scott, man, I, you got to break that down. I'm not... I'm not quite understanding what you mean by that he said the local media love to be contrarians when it suits them yeah you got i'm gonna listen to your show tomorrow i know you'll probably expound on that i'm gonna listen to you in the morning because i know you're gonna expound on that so yeah good to see the og in the building man <clears throat> yeah but i'm not finna give y'all no lies man i'm finna tell y'all straight i'm finna keep it real with y'all man I think this is a time to where, and I said this before, I want Micah to do some self-reflection. I want him to do some self-reflection because maybe they coming after you. Oh, okay, I got you, Scott. I got you, I got you, I got you. He said, okay, I'm with you now. He said they can't be brutally honest with them Jones. And see, ooh, let me pause. Let, let's let me let me back up and talk about that. That's see. Let's talk about that. See, that's so. Let's talk about that, man. There's a certain amount of reality that we all gotta recognize. So Sadly, it looked like it was a small war between new media and old media this week. And I'm not proud of that. I want it to calm down. I really do. I really do. Uh, and I talked to my boy Tuck. So me and Tuck talking. <laughs> <laughs> and see, this is what I love about Tuck. Tuck keeps it so 100. Tuck will tell you Man, I can't say everything in Kansas City because he works with ESPN Kansas City. 
In other words, my hands are tied. I can't just go bomb on Kansas City because of who I work for. And see, that's just the truth of when you working for one of these organizations. It's the truth. So if y'all really think that anybody working for dot com can say whatever they want, you are in a major delusional bubble. That is the benefit. That is the benefit of new media and independence. But I also go be fair and balanced and say this, that I've seen them do it. I've seen them do it. I listen. Yeah, T. Yeah. Um, T, I had this issue with you before, bro. You say, boss, please, you from Oak Cliff. I don't know why you do this, bro. Like, every time I'm saying, like, I know y'all want me to bum on people, bro. And if you out of here, bro, you can leave. You don't have to announce to the world that you left. You can leave, bro. Because if, if you don't agree, that's fine. But you don't have to. And you say you from my hood. That's what tripped me out about you. Is you say you from Oak Cliff, but you go out your way to try to salt the chat when you leave me. If you're from Oak Cliff, act like you're from Oak Cliff. Matter of fact, I ain't even go there. It's a certain way real Oak Cliff people move, and it's not like you, bro. Oh, my. Ooh. See, this is real. See, Scott coming in here with that juice. Hold on now. We getting some good content. Boy, Scott said, Derek Egan flat out told me we have an advantage in what we can say. He said they have to toe the line. Yeah, and that's the truth. Yes, we have an advantage. We can say it. We can say things they can't say. Yes, we can go right there. Because, see, and that's where the fan got to be honest. They got to be honest. Yeah, they got to be honest. See, you can't get mad when people start connecting dots even if they don't connect you can't get mad when people connect the dot you can't brag and say we the flagship station of the dallas cowboys but then get mad when people say even if it's false even if it's false oh y'all a puppet you can't get mad at that because people go connect those dots they're gonna do it even if it's not true they're gonna do it just but based on who you work for period yes it's just what it is the thing is people like me go be honest people like tuck will be honest and say yeah we understand and scott go be honest and say there's a certain line we understand that y'all do have to tow and that's okay we not even knocking y'all for that like nah bro you mean to tell me that you would be paying your mortgage working for the radio station, but go crazy on Jerry Jones and have to interview him? You a lie. Stop lying. Stop. Stop lying. So, but going back to this Michael Parsons thing, this is the thing I will say. And I said this before. Just like C.D. Lamb had to shut up everybody, same thing Michael Parsons got to do. And I think he does need to go study leadership. I do. I really do. I think he need to go study. And I'm going to be the first to admit that I needed to study leadership. I remember when I was first a sales manager, right? And my team, we won everything i was the top producer and i had the top producing team right but the problem was we was at odds nobody got along it was bad morale so you know what i did i had to look at myself i said bro y'all won but did you want to win like that now go study better ways to be a better leader 
So guess what I did? I picked up a book by John Maxwell, Developing a Leader Within You, and I studied it. I studied it. So the next time when I led a team, guess what? We got all the same awards. I was the top producer again, and I had the top producing team, but this time we all got along. We all had better morale. Why? Because I had to take a look at me. So what I really feel like is going on is that people are running with this. They are going to pay Michael Parsons. We might as well just, just stop playing, bro. Stop playing like he not finna get paid, bro. He go get paid. And I don't think this necessarily came out because it's contract time. It could be. It could be. Like, I ain't gonna say it can't neither. It could. It could. It could be. It could be contract time. So it's time to take shots at your best. That's what we do. So I just want to measure that Kool-Aid on that, man. And I really honestly feel like it's not what we think it is. I want, and if I was the boss, if I was the boss, right? If I'm sitting here and I'm Jerry and I'm Steven Jones, I'm going to put myself in their, their shoes. If I'm getting ready to pay you millions, I do want every, every, every ounce of your best. Not even just your play. I want every ounce of your best in terms of the locker room as well. And, and oh, I do respect this T. And I had, oh, let me, let me pause real quick. I respect pushback. I just want to say this real quick before I finish what I was saying. I respect pushback. It's just a way to do it, bro. That's all I'm going to say about that. It's a way to do it. But I do want every ounce out of my players. All of them. If I'm paying you, if I'm paying you millions, I want the best leader out of you and I want the best player out of you. It's just what it is. And it's just like they sent a message out and they was like, Shh, man, we think you might be a beta. Talking about C.D. Lamb. And he shut him up. This is an opportunity for Michael Parsons to shut him up. Show him, improve your leadership. Improve your play. Improve your effort. Leave no doubts on why you should be the highest paid across the board. Go get under big brother Dak Prescott. Go get under, yeah, who studied leadership from a master's degree level yes that's who you go get under to learn to be even a better professional see i'm telling the truth i don't i'm not lying today you want answers <laughs> oh man i can't wait to get on these phones man because i know these phones gonna be lit i know these phones gonna be lit man all right so the next thing and then we go jump right on these phones bro we're not going to even play because i want to hear from y'all today because i i know this is different bro but i tell y'all i'm glad i was under the weather because i promise y'all i had a chance to think and i think i do my best work when i really have time to really think and just kind of digest all this stuff man you know what i'm saying uh the next thing, man, that's on my mind. I'm going to be quick with this one. I ain't going to take all day with this one. <laughs> this Chuba thing. God, dog. See, I wanted to go live immediately when I was like, oh, my God. These bros. Oh, they brought back Chuba. Oh, Lord. Oh. Oh. So, I'm going to say this. What does it mean? Because it means, to me, it means a lot that they brought back Chuma. See, because if you've been listening to my content the last two weeks, y'all know I made a very heavy case on the red shirt plan, right? 
uh, and I know I proved it. If you have not go watch that show, go watch that show. Go watch that show. If I know, I know sometimes people got to get caught, caught up. That's the show to go watch. So I made a whole case and proved it that this red shirt plan was the all in plan that they had for two years. Okay. <laughs> so I ain't got time to recap that whole thing, but I'm gonna say this. How can you make a plan? Oh, cause one of the main parts is I highlighted was where Jay Tuck, when we was uh, doing the recap of the aftermath of last year's draft and he raised a good point he said man in order for us to even see this class there's a wall that has to clear out and then he said we also got another wall so then i start looking at it i said so look at look at it y'all let's look at it from common sense right you couldn't even really see most of these red shirts and I'm talking about people like Mozzie or uh, Fioko, right? You couldn't even see those guys unless you, or even Sam Williams, unless you cleared the room out, unless you cleared out the wall. So a lot of us was looking at the lack of um, activity in free agency thinking, oh, we're not all in. It's like, no, nah, they are all in, but they're all in with the red shirt guys it's a big gamble but it is all in i'm just being very clear about that so think about it so you bet you let fowler go you let armstrong go for the hope of sam williams right and for the hope of fioka so you basically having blind faith that these guys go take a step up. So you let go, you know, Michael Gallup for the hope of Brooks, for the hope of Tolbert. So you having blind faith with some reps that they go take a step. So you let most, you let your RB1 go. You let your left tackle go. You let your, de you let your defensive line go. For the hope of the upside in Mozzie. That's your aggressive red shirt plan. And then you bring back Chuma. What does that say? So to me, this is what it says. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> My boy Rome say, so what's the DT plan? Mazi and some on the unknown DT that they ain't signed yet. We gonna talk about that. We go, we go, we gonna talk about that. But going back to, what does that say? You know what that says to me? They have some major doubts in Walesco. That's what it says to me. Yep. And see, Gary, yep. I almost brought him into the presentation, Gary, what you just said. Gary said, it tells me Josh Ball is finished. Ooh. See, cause think about it. They showing a whole lot of blind faith in them red shirts, but it's one area they ain't. They, 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 we ain't got no faith. <laughs> Ooh, I shouldn't be laughing cause it ain't funny. <laughs> and it does concern me, man. It does. And it concerns me to the point to where I called an emergency film session with my big brother, OC. I said, bro, we gotta break this down by the film. Cause I already know what I saw, but I need to prove it with the film, bro. Uh, and he wanna do that task. We gonna either do it Monday or Wednesday. 
We will either do it Monday or Wednesday. But the thing is, and I am torn. I'm torn from, from a couple of reasons. So let me first show you the first reason why I'm torn. Shout out to Coach Marv. He sent me an article that's um, got me thinking, right? Because I'm not just thinking about the debate that's going on with Tyler Smith because the debate is should he play left tackle or left guard and most people kind of stop with he has a bigger upside at left guard but I think if you stop there you're not thinking at this complete in my opinion okay so because it's not about the individual play of Tyler in my opinion it's about the unit play or the left side play and I have to ask a question and I really want to get y'all response I'm gonna pause I'm gonna wait to get y'all report response to which one is a potential better left side all right option one Chuma at left guard. Tyler Smith at left tackle. Or Tyler Smith at left guard and Chuma at left tackle. I want to get y'all answer too. I want to get y'all answer. I'm going to wait. I'm gonna say it again in case you might have missed it. Which one is a better left side? Which one would you want for that? Where Chuma is playing left guard and Tyler Smith is playing left tackle, that's one. Or two, option two, Chuma playing left tackle. And Tyler Smith playing left guard. Now, I'm seeing a lot of option one. I need answers. Come on now. I need y'all to answer. I need y'all to participate. You want answers? I need answers. I want to see this. I want to see. I'm waiting. This is a live poll. Let's go. You I'm want seeing, answers? Okay, I'm seeing one. 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 Okay. No twos at all? I'm waiting. You can't handle the truth. Yeah. I'm waiting. No, it's, it's too many people here not to answer this question. One or two? You want answers? Oh, so y'all not going to... Oh, okay. Y'all not going to participate. Okay, so... uh huh. I put it like this. Because there should be a lot of answers in this. <coughs> I see. Okay, we got us a two. Yeah, that's your only choice, Steven. But say, is that our only choice? Yeah, that's your only choice. One or two. Yeah. <laughs> this is dead. I love these live polls. No the boat, you gotta pick one, bro. See, come on, man. Y'all can't do this, man. See, 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 make the hard decision, man. Come on now. I ain't trying to hear no to Chuma. No, you gotta make a decision. Chuma's on your team. Don't don't cop out. We need an answer. We want an answer. Yeah. Somebody said two. You want answers? Yeah. Huh. So overwhelming so far. Okay, Coach Marv say two all day. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. All right. You say two all day? All right. So this is where Coach Marv got me thinking, all right? Cause see, I said one all day, especially when I watched Chuma play left tackle. That's why we got to take this to the film. We gonna take this to the film cause I got to take a real close look. I got to take a closer look cause in my mind, I saw him play very decent at guard and very bad at left tackle, which to me was a bad left side and leaving my quarterback at risk. But then Coach Marv sent me this. He got me thinking. 
the NFL's high paid defensive tackles. And, and when you start looking, you start seeing a trend that there are starting to be a lot of money going into the interior. It's a lot of money going into that interior, you know? So, uh, it, this, this is starting to become a harder debate because I already know where Coach Marv is coming from because Coach Marv is coming from the standpoint of strength on strength. So you seeing an uptick in basically interior attacks from the defensive tackles. And you starting to see the finances show that as well. So the question is, where is Dak more at risk? I still say one, but I cannot deny the case that Coach Marv is making in terms of the future threats of defensive tackles. So, you know, I was I was under the weather, so I really couldn't talk about Chuma, but I wanted to give y'all my thoughts on it uh, since he was the recent signing, right? And what did it mean to me and what was my measurement of that Kool-Aid? So we don't have no super chats right now. So this is what we go do. We go get right on the phone. Let's go. Call in paper, got them talking nice to me. Call in. Down the bottle, it be going right through me. Let's go. Brown baby, down to take a flight to me. They think that I'm stunting, but it's slight to me. Uh. Pile in paper, got them talking nice to me. Pile paper. Guess that's why the labels want the rights to me. City on my back and it feel light to me. They think that I'm stunting. Y'all right, yeah, so. call on in. Coach Marv, the first one in the building. Call in. Y'all give me one second, man. Yeah, let's go. All right, Coach Marv, since you the first one in the building, you the only one in the building, it's on you. What's up, Coach? Hey, boss. Can you hear me? What's up? Let's fight this out. Okay. You you said two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I, Listen, I, man. Let's I, fight I, it I, out. What you got? I, I, you and you brought up that list right there, right? Yeah. If if let's just say if we were going against Washington, we had to put up that put up that right now. Yeah. Or we had to go against Philly. Mm -hmm. Let's say we Philly or Washington. Mm -hmm. I'll take my chances with. Uh, Chuma blocking, and I and there's a no no distance. Uh, Doris Armstrong or Fowler blocking Doris Armstrong or Fowler, and just keeping them just not having a one way go. And if they do get around the, the corner, I know I got a man that's gonna hold up in the in the guard position where that can come up. He can step up and get out the side door because he can step up because I got Tyler Smith handling pain or. The other monster that he got it in Washington. Let me push back. So, <clears throat> why do we need Tyler Smith at left guard when we saw TJ Bass handle that so called ferocious interior? I, I still, when you, when we talk about the elite guys, I know Tyler Smith is elite. Yeah. Do we trust that TJ Bass is going to be elite or he just going to be good? Nah, we not, nah, nah, we not saying elite, but did he get the job done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, when you're talking about in the, and I think a lot of people, we get a, with the, the money is showing where the, where, where people are, 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 are focusing on yeah. because they understand pressure in the middle of the face of a quarterback allows the defensive ends get to get to the to sack. I, I take for instance the game that was wonderful and, and I think we if you go back to the telecast when we did the the the, the, the Philadelphia game. Yeah. I think the Philadelphia game when they played and I kept alluding to the through the telecast that was the reason why Dak was getting up in between the guard and the tackle and getting out of the pocket and making plays is because the center guard guard was dominating the guys in the middle of the field for the for uh against Philadelphia. 
and it uh, made the job hard for the um the, the end to get there because their angles got that bad. And I also say this though, boss. This question we might need to ask. Tyron Smith had a, a comeback year this year. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Looked like all pro Tyron Smith again, right? Mm-hmm. Is that is that because Tyron was playing so well? Or he had an all world guard beside him this time? I mean, because before he was slipping, he was slipping when he had Connor Williams, right? Because well, well, when you have a guard, I mean, when you have a guard, and, let me and explain. I see where you going with the theory, but I will say this: Could it also be the fact that they got that uh, training schedule right with him, where basically you need to have him ready for game day? You see what I'm saying? Because oh, see, that, you, that, you, you yeah, connected that, that, I mean, that, I'm not saying all that. Don't necessarily all the way connect because you saying Tyler yeah. play made his play good when it could have been his rest during the week made his play good. So those yeah, guys and don't I, and all, I, and all I, the way connect. I understand, but, but let me explain to you technique wise how that can help you. Okay. When you have and then guards I want you to talk about that Miami set. game because we got to talk about that Miami game because Chuma was bad at tackle. But but go ahead though. Okay, and, and I'm gonna lead into that Miami game. So when you have guards that can hard set, when they can hard set and 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 matter of fact stabilize the line of scrimmage where it is very little push in the quarterback face. You make your tackle's job easier because the angles that the defense end to get to get around the corner is almost horrible because the quarterback can step up that half a yard, which it kills you, kills the defense end, makes it bring the defense end back to the tackle. Yeah. If the quarterback is in there and he cannot step up that half a yard, he's feeling pressure in the, in the middle. He makes it harder on his tackle because he gives the defense end a better angle to the quarterback. And you can ask tackles this. Sometimes the guy gets he, he gonna run around the corner and they wonder why the quarterback not step back and now he run right into the the defense end run right into the quarterback. You like why are you moving back? Because the guys in the front cannot hold in, in my face. That's where it's very, very important. Now you can only give them a one way go. It helps the tackles out a great deal. Now we go to the Miami game. Yeah. I really had the Cowboys made a decision, just like we made a decision when I, I talked about it first. They didn't want to put Chuma against that guy that just got $100 million from the Raiders, one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL that Miami had. Say that again. Say that one They didn't want him to wreck the game. The guy that, the, the, uh, the, the one that had 100, I forgot, I came, the one came from Clipson. He, and then, and, and he was one of the first defensive linemen signed, and the, and the Raiders signed him big time money right off the bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, they no. They didn't I'm want talk- him no, no, to be. No, 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 no. I'm talking about how bad Chuma can in the Miami game tackle. Where we took our chance with too much the tackle, and, I and think then I think a lot of I people got so cost us. And I think a lot of people got up. I think a lot of people got upset. One of the things I've been seeing on on on, on when people were talking about. When he signed to me, talking about look at this plate when the when the uh yeah. Chubb got around yeah. and he pressed that. Yeah. Well, if 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 we want to watch film, that same blitz happened on Terrence Steele, that same blitz happened in Miami, that same blitz been happening against us all year long. And I can point out three or four games where that same thing where they moved back to the other side, linebacker started coming, he faked like he's coming hard. You your tackle is told to take the the, the I, biggest threat. It wasn't even just that one and play. And he leave the other guy. It wasn't even just that one play to but, me, coach. It was it was And they did it several times play. over and, and over and again. Then, and then and I hate to fight you, coach, because you know I love you. You know I love you, coach. Well, I, I, I'm quite sure y'all watch the film. Y'all gonna say it wasn't as bad as y'all thought it was. No, listen. When y'all watch the film, y'all gonna say when y'all watch man, the play by coach. play, y'all be like, okay, man, it was, it was bad, what? but it wasn't as bad as y'all thought you know, it was. You know what we gonna do? We gonna take this to the film because I don't even want to debate memory stuff. But That's, that blitz, we gonna that take, blitz. This is what we gonna do. We coach. had a problem with that blitz. This is what we gonna do. I'm gonna invite. Because you played offensive line and you coached offensive line, right? Right. All right. So, 
I'm gonna invite you back. I'm gonna put you on the show. We gonna have the OC and we go look at it together. Chuma playing guard and Chuma playing tackle, and we gonna go line but, by but, line but, and we go grade it, coach. To me, that's the first. But I way think to the do biggest. I, I think the, I think the biggest question is this, though, boss. Okay. I do not think that they brought Chuma back here to be Tyron Smith's replacement. I think they brought Chuma no. back just to be a guy no. that is a, a a quality of guy that you can put in the game that, like you said, their, their thing about the West Coast is not good. I think they think more highly of Richard than they think of Chuma. I just think they want to put a, a rookie there. So I just think they want the guy because Listen, how stupid Chuma got to be if he really think he going to start an offensive tackle no. and he get he signed for a million dollars, man. Yeah. What, what, what is these what is these guys thinking? If you think the people going to play me, why in the world? What in the world would I even sign for a million dollars in the least of a, a starting tackle in the league at least get 10 million dollars and yeah. I'm going to sign for what? So the Cowboys are, are really playing this game of do you think they would have signed Chuma back if Chuma would have said well at least man give me decent money six million dollars or yeah. seven million they would have said no but if you gonna come back for a, a meal you know what we say yeah we'll take you anytime <laughs> hey coach hey hey coach <laughs> let, let me go to the That's next ridiculous, man. Hold on real quick. Hold on hey, real quick. Hey, man, I'm in a boss, my man. What's wrong with these guys, boss? Hold on real quick. The OC texts me. Oh. Let me see what's up with the OC. Let me see what my boy talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so listen. All right, coach, listen. Um, Let me take the next call, and then we'll, we'll figure out how to really. Yeah, man. I don't understand these guys, boss. But appreciate your balls, man. I don't understand these guys. These guys are what you talking man, about? Man, they they some desperate brothers, man. Too much. If you sign for a million dollars, you think the people gonna play me? And I started games for you, and I'm gonna sign for a million dollars, man. You, I don't even know what's wrong with these guys, man. Well, wait, what, what's wrong with these guys? Anyway, man. <laughs> we're, 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 we're chopping up, coach. Appreciate oh, that's ball. All right, all right, all right. So yeah, man, I I definitely ate hey, and uh. T. Foster, don't call me youngster. I ain't your youngster. I'm in my forties, man. I ain't nobody youngster. Chill out, man. For real. See, that's what I be talking about, man. See, you say something like that again, I'm gonna kick you out. For real. See, I I, I see that sneak dissing and that disrespect. I ain't gonna let you do it. Just chill out. It's that simple. You gonna respect me? I'm gonna respect you. It's that simple. All right. Hold on, real quick. <laughs> Call me youngster. All right, man. JV, you live. Hey, what's good, man, boss, man? Always great hearing from you. You too, JV. What's going on with you, big dog? Hey, hey, I just want to give my salute out there to Coach Marv. I mean, I agree with Coach Marv 100% on everything what he was saying right there. Mm -hmm. I wanted to... Uh, talk with you because see that's why I, I've been on several I've been on multiple channels and things and talking about hey maybe we should consider drafting a center at number 24 okay you know and, 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 I mean I mean I, I, uh, a tackle would be great uh -huh. but yeah drafting a center at number 24, I've been pushing that and pushing that and pushing that, but as well as push, uh, pushing the center, I was saying if uh, Cooper DeJean or, or Kool-Aid sell the 24, we can go there and probably make a, a trade later on down the line and get rid of because the, the cornerback room be so deep. Yeah. But I was, but after talking with Law about that, he did make a lot of sense when trading for somebody i mean knowing the coaches we got and the contract situation that wouldn't work but yeah that was my main thing about um about the whole offensive line was maybe focusing on the center at 24. but i i, 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 I want to say talk this to you. jv 
I say this. That's mm-hmm. why, in my opinion, the perfect pick is Barton out of Duke because of his flexibility and the way that we love flexibility with the Dallas Cowboys. Mike McCarthy says so many times that his ideal guard is a form of tackle because of the athleticism. He said that a thousand times. So, and the fact that Barton played center when he was a freshman uh, and the way that, uh, uh, you know, he's rising lately he might not be the best fit for other teams, but I think he's the best fit for us uh, because of his versatility and his flexibility and the way, the, the way that he could play guard, center, and in an emergency play uh, situation, he could even play some tackle. So I agree with you, and that's why I'm really put a bullseye on him, you know, a big bullseye on him, because I think he fit the perfect philosophy of the Dallas Cowboys. So. I wouldn't be mad if he to pick. Yeah. Now, if it's just a pure center, I wouldn't agree with that at 24. I think you can get a pure center round two, round three. It's a lot of good centers in this class. Uh, I don't think you have to be that aggressive, but I think if you go get, I think he would be the ideal fit because of his versatility and his upside. Jake. Yeah, yeah, it, that, that's what I was gonna think because see, I love his strength. And just like you said, I, I love his versatility yeah. But like you said, uh, Mike McCarthy was in love with guys who could who could uh, transfer from uh, tackle oh. to guard. Yep. Yeah, and that's why I think he's so in love with uh, Tyler Smith. Yep. And I believe that Tyler Smith yeah. should not move at all. That is my whole thing. He should not move. That is all pro status right there. You have nothing but to worry about. The, but dress the left, left guard, side, though. Just, see, because every because see people to me do. And talk about him like they talk about Dak in a reverse way, though. See, we all agree he's an ideal left guard, but that does not address the left side. When you're talking about, in my opinion, JV, in my opinion, when you're talking about him, you got to also think about the left side. That's why I was asking everybody, which one is a better left side? You know what I mean? Not... Because if you ask, is he a better left guard than left tackle, 99% of us going to say, yeah, he's an all-pro, Hall of Fame, left guard. But when Absolutely. you say which one is the best Absolutely. left side, to me, I can see Chuma or TJ Bass holding down guard good enough to make your whole left side better. I'm waiting on somebody to address that. That's where I was calling you for. Okay. Because, see, I've been to every single content creator. I'm talking about, even where I, I, I don't I don't come in on Skywalker City because I be working. Mm-hmm. I was talking about, listen, but I'm talking about landlord, law, I'm talking about watch. Everybody, I've been like, has anybody heard any word on Austin Richards work with Duke anywhere this uh, offseason? I haven't heard a thing. Not one. Not one single word. Knowing that, too, they didn't play him at much at all this last season. Talk about uh, they were terrified of his of his ethic and all that. Why he would be out there on the field. Knowing that Duke Manningweather had stood up there and brought Terry <laughs> Steele up there to the to the me, outstanding let, player that he is. You. Let me pause <laughs> you real quick. I never understood why it was rumors that they were so terrified of Awesome. Like Me neither. Like, does that make sense to you? Yep. Like Jay-Z? No, it doesn't. Okay, I'm just making sure I wasn't tripping. Like, what? What you terrified for? Mm-hmm. Like, we didn't watch preseason. Like, the man was doing his thing. Like, I saw him, him and TJ yep. Bass, one and the same. I see Awesome with a higher upside if you give him, if he get more strength. You know what I mean? So, go exactly. Ahead. He had a whole year to do that. He had yes. a whole 2023 20, yeah, season to okay. do that. Okay. Yeah, I was but, making but sure I wasn't tripping. I, I just, no, 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 because I'm right there with you, and that's why I was over there. That's because see, every time I I comment and I and I want to talk about this right here, talk about that particular subject, 
I do get thrown off because, but it hasn't happened tonight, which is great. And you remember me over there calling and I did all that style language. I don't want to do that again. But yeah, I mean, that's what is up happening. But I just want to know, has anyone or is any, anyone able to get in touch with Duke Manyweather or anyone within the Cowboys camp to see if Austin Richards is working with Duke Manyweather this offseason to improve whatever he got to improve on. I think Scott because the only thing Scott, that I think I, Scott talked to on uh, Duke and Law talked to Duke. Uh, you know, I think they got a relationship with him. I know Law does. I think Scott does. Uh, so, <coughs> I, excuse me. You know how how you know how many you know you get you get a lot of trolls on your on your on in your chat when you I go live. So. I guess so. Now I want you. I want you. Yeah, I want you to multiply that by by four hundred million when it comes to law uh, live streams as well. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and, and like I told you, the the, the way I don't want to go over here and, and and use all all the type of language that I used last time I called to talk with you, but that's how I end up getting. You know, when you try to when you want to discuss things and you want to discuss them, I. It's a guy that works for SportsIllustrated.com just posted today about Dak Prescott being traded to the Las Vegas Raiders. Like, we don't know that Dak Prescott got a no-trade clause. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, mm -hmm. I, but, yeah. so, but it's folks still running with this. Yeah, yeah, man. And so, yeah, my boy Nate I mean, said, it, 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 Nate said Vach and Duke doing some online videos this week. So Vach will probably be somebody that will have that answer. I'm just trying to give you your answer because I don't know either, uh, you know, if they doing some work together. Uh, but Vach will probably know, especially because he's doing the show with Duke this week, um, according to my boy Nate. And then... Uh, you know, Sky will probably know and Law will probably know. So I'm just trying to right. send you down that rabbit hole where you can get that answer because I want that answer too. That's a good question. Uh, and I just let you know, too, it, the, the, the nonsense is going to constantly keep coming. And I do end up getting uh, veered off on the wrong thing. You know what I'm saying? And I don't. And, and it's not ADHD or whatever, I guess. Uh, maybe it is, but shoot, I just don't like all the stuff that be coming out. Because, see, I, like I said, I start off on my own tangent, and then I go off on this folks, and I end up leaving the whole point. But, shoot, hey, like I said, I, I love what all you guys do, and, you, and shoot, I continue to support you guys, and just keep on doing your thing. But that was my main point. And go, okay, go Cowboys and do your thing, bro. And I'll holler at you later. Thank you, JV. That was JV, man. That was our last call. Appreciate it. <clears throat> so, um, basically, man, it looks like to me that Tackle is almost forced to be our first pick some kind of way. So it's almost like we got to hope that we don't get swallowed up or wiped out for real because we put in a lot of stock, especially for the people that really want to keep Tyler at left guard to where all of us, all of us will agree that it's probably his most natural position. So I do want to tell you, I'm excited in the near future. The OC is going to be joining to do a breakdown because I think the only way to really answer questions truly is with the film. And that leaves no doubt when we really put all our eyes on this. I'm um, honestly, you know, opinions are good, but film is better because film basically just takes away all the doubt and gives you all the evidence. Uh, in terms of obviously worn thin, I'm going to just tell you, Cowboy Nation, don't get caught up in the click and the bumper sticker of Warren Thin. 
I think he was talking more so about uh, some leadership things that maybe Micah need to work on. I don't think it has anything to do with his play at all. And matter of fact, I will say this. Even if he might be a little bit of a headache behind the scenes, maybe, I don't know. His talent is so overwhelming that you sometimes got to overlook it. <laughs> it's just what it is, man. Like, Dennis Rodman was one of the biggest headaches probably ever, but when it came down to him getting them rebounds, you did what you had to do to win a championship. You still dealt with the antics. You dealt with the headaches. You dealt with whatever it is, whatever it was that was wearing you thin. So, Cowboy Nation, we're not going to let this worry us. We're not going to trip. They are going to pay a generational player. Don't sweat it. Sleep good. B -b 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 Boss Cowboy Sports, where your voice matters. La, move it too bossy, uh, but don't tread softly, uh, but not flossy, uh, the streets ain't taught me, uh, move it too bossy, uh, but don't tread softly, uh, but not flossy, uh, the streets ain't taught me, I'm uh, just trying to get my neck back, we came from section A. And I knew I was at since the second grade Man, I swear my time is coming cause I'm never late Came from broken homes and broken dreams to get him paid Love, dollar, dollar, dollar bill, uh, listen close, this is not a drill Cause hungry trying to get a meal, I been in light, who gon' pay a bill? I been in action, been in traction, uh, surplus with never blackin', uh Shining light, but still we blackin', uh, red lights will stop the action, uh Green to go, even when it's slow, higher heights to balance out the lows Can't ride the wave cause you ain't got a boat All